The Twisted Marionette World Boss from Season 1 Living World is now available as an instanced squad encounter. You want to do this with as many people as possible, up to 50 in a private squad or even more in a public squad, but that won't be available after this week. But it is very possible to do it with 25 or even less. Essentially what happens is there are 5 lanes and mobs will run up the lane to try to reach the portal. Prevent the champion watchwork mobs from reaching the portal or they will increase the Aether Cannon bar. If the bar gets to full, the marionette pops off and we all die. You can build barricades using repair hammers and kill the mobs spawning around but generally just focus on the champions by breaking their bar and damaging them. While this is happening in four of the lanes, one lane will need to enter the portal to attempt the boss fight. While this is happening, the mobs stop running down that lane, so everyone in that lane should go in the portal. After entering, players will be evenly split among five platforms to fight a boss, which needs to be killed along with the regulator object behind it within two minutes. Because the entire squad is split into 5 lanes and each lane is split again by 5 for each boss, you'll often be in a small group of 2-3 to three, or even be soloing a boss. This means a lot of responsibility is placed on each and every player to know each boss mechanic, which I'll detail later on. If each of the 5 groups from that lane beat their boss, they will break one of the chains of the marionette, and once 5 chains have been broken, you win. So you want to get 5 chains before the Aether Cannon is charged. However, if you fail to break a chain, not only will you fail to progress the fight, but you will be punished with a hefty amount of Aether Cannon being charged. This means that you should 100% prioritize winning the boss encounters. Sure, having clean lanes will give you more attempts at the boss, but if you can't beat the boss, it doesn't matter anyways. After you finish the boss fight, you will get a debuff that prevents you from re-entering the boss portal for long enough that you can't do the next two or three lanes. So someone in lane one could go to lane four or five afterwards, two could go to five or one, and three could go to one or two and do the next boss fight as soon as possible. The most important thing when doing the bosses is not really so much the mechanics, but actually having enough players there to do it. The strategy I like to use is a heavy rotation aggressive strategy. Zerg each and every boss encounter to ensure that they get done. If you get the first few bosses done and then fail a couple after, the ones who went for the first boss will lose their debuff later and be able to attempt the boss again. Confident players should be in the first two lanes to carry as many attempts as possible. Rather than splitting your lanes thin and trying to greed a win on every lane, Ensure a few lanes win and leave a skeleton crew on one of the later lanes so that you can stack back up afterwards. You can afford to fail two or three attempts, but no more than three, and you'll need immaculate lane clearing to last that long anyways. Better to prioritize the boss because that is the win condition. So now that the general rotation strategy is out, how do you actually fight the warden bosses once your lane goes in? First of all, which boss you fight depends on how many bosses your squad has defeated. If lane 1 fails to beat boss 1, then lane 2 will need to take it out still. So basically you can know which boss you will fight by looking at how many chains have been broken. The first boss, Warden 1, will always start at lane 1. The marionette will stomp around the platforms during Warden 1, so avoid that for the achievement. It takes no damage from enemies that hit it from the front, which you can see the arrow indicator below it shows where the warden is facing. There will also spawn some trash mobs that will make it hard to hit the boss with projectiles. Whoever the boss aggros to should try to not kite it so much so that the other players can easily hit it from behind. If you're soloing warden 1, you will be in big trouble because it will be very difficult to do damage to it from behind when it's always chasing you. You can break the bar and it will stay still for you to burst it down. With one chain broken, you will face Warden 2 and the marionette will do a high kick attack, which is a narrow line that crosses the platform. 
the Warden 2 will be invulnerable while it spins toward whoever it aggroes to. It also drops mines around the room. You don't want to avoid these mines, you want to lure the Warden into them while not really standing in them but being close enough that the Warden will basically run into it which will break their invulnerability and stun them for a long time allowing you to damage them freely. With Two chains broken, you face Warden 3, and the marionette will do a lightning attack. Just avoid the orange circles when the marionette approaches your platform. Warden 3 is a heavy melee pressure encounter. You want to kite it from range because it's slow. The defiance bar is easy to break and that can allow melee classes to get close to it and do damage. Otherwise, you want to try to stay behind it and dodge when it launches into the air. Bring some stun breaks. With three chains broken, you will face Warden 4, and the marionette will use their sword attack. Watch the marionette here very closely, and when you see the orange AoE that covers the entire platform, look for when she slashes her sword across all the platforms. It is a bit delayed, so you really need to look for it. Warden 4 is all about positioning. Sometimes there will be AoE in the center, and sometimes there will be AoE at the outer circle. You want a mix of ranged and melee damage options, and you will want either the mobility to run from the homing missile, or you want to pop some defensive cooldowns so you can tank it for others. Endure pain or anything like that can be really good. In general, you need to position to avoid the warden, and dodges to avoid the marionette slash. With four chains broken, you face warden five, and the marionette will do the scream attack, which is just some spread out orange circles you can easily avoid. However, the fifth warden will charge in a line towards its target and knock them. You want to rotate around them so they have a hard time charging straight at you. When the warden dies, it will split into two smaller halves, and when those die, they will split even further and so on. These splits will also perform the charge attacks, so keep moving. AoE damage is really necessary to cleave out the splits later on in this fight, so make sure you aren't stuck on a build with all single target damage on this warden. Also bring some stun breaks. Because you can know which boss you will face, you can make small adjustments in your build beforehand to counter that specific boss. For example, on Warden 1, if you're a thief, you can go stealth and lose aggro so that it turns around and then you can backstab it and do damage. You want builds that are self-sufficient in general. This encounter was designed before Heart of Thorns, which is when the combat system became more trinity oriented with supports. Nowadays in PvE, players are so used to stacking together as 10, they assume that everyone else's build and buffs are inherent to theirs. But they aren't, and when you are split from your team, you'll feel it. If you are a full support build with no damage, you may not make the 2 minute DPS check, especially if you get other allies with low DPS. If you're a full DPS with no sustain and you die, your entire lane fails. Build around survivability because you have plenty of time to do these bosses so long as you don't feed. Stun breaks, option to do ranged and melee damage, CC and dodges are all important. And if you complete your boss early, you will get a special action key ability in Spire which is a 2,500 range boon application and it will revive downed allies. So you want to basically save that until you see someone go down and then cast it and you can actually save one of the other platforms from wiping, which is pretty good because normally people have an issue with feeling out of control. If you finish faster, then you can prevent the others from wiping unless they wipe faster than you can kill your boss. Once the final chain breaks, you've won. If you thought this video was helpful, consider subscribing and liking the video. Check out the links in the description and I will see you all next time.